open source hardware is usually uh, found under the same licenses that you use for all open source software, including the GNU GPL, the GNU Creative Commons, um, and other non-commercial um, licensing that we use for any kind of software service. However, uh, groups have come up with their own open source hardware licenses, including some licenses from CERN. The CERN uh, open licenses uh, are being used for projects in the Large Hadron Collider at the moment. And then now you can go ahead and build, if you really have your own, your own Large Hadron Collider, uh, parts for it for free. Pretty sure that the project there is a little bit expensive. Um, non commercial, non good ideas for projects. Um, you're looking at um, projects that have been bound down by all the licensing and things from commercial licenses. Um, other things that are binding up the system are when you use certain licenses like non-commercial licenses for open source, which kind of defeats the whole purpose. Um, the whole point behind open source is to be able to share and then communicate and then take ideas from your community and re-import them back in. And if your solution is non-commercial, the original guy can't use your ideas because he's ultimately selling them. Um, other things that we're looking for in open source hardware are you're going to be publishing a lot of materials. It sounds daunting, but if you keep good build logs when you're actually designing these things, it's actually very simple. Uh, most open source hardware projects are going to include things like a bill of materials. How much it costs to get certain parts, if you're doing circuitry, capacitors, resistors, what did you use, what did you think you could use, well, how much did you pay for them. All that is very helpful information for somebody else to look at your part list and say, I could do that cheaper, I could do that faster, I could do that stronger. Other things um, they're going to be looking for is what can I upgrade, what can I change, can I use an 18 mega 16 or an 18 mega 32 or a 328 if you're doing things like Arduinos, which you just simply pop the chip up, pop a new one in. Um, as far as things like the uh, Global Village Construction Set, as he mentioned, they are using multiple power supplies. There are gas power supplies, diesel power supplies, electrical power supplies. They're all power blocks. They just plug right into each unit. And that allows them to have a consistency across the different power supplies to power their vehicles and yet maintain that independence where if you're in an area where you can't get gasoline as cheap as diesel, use the diesel. If gasoline is cheap, use the gasoline. If you need electric, if you're off the grid, you know, they have an open source windmill they're building that you can use to recharge your batteries. Um, So we're going to go back to Arduino for a second. Arduino is one of the most common licenses out there. It is almost completely open. Their license system allows anyone to take their products, modify them, change them, and then they will take ideas from the community and come out with a newer version. And this has led from Arduino's being fairly large to now being tiny, tiny, tiny little circuits. Um, all because people have been contributing towards the design. And Never work for it, no. So the one most important thing to remember, I'm not a lawyer. I can't give you legal advice on any kind of licensing, therefore, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> hacker spaces. Most of you probably heard the term hacker before, and it's probably the most misused term in the industry. Everyone thinks hacker is the movie. They are a one type of hacker. In the DIY community, hackers are the informal term for any do-it-yourself open source hardware or closed source hardware modifier. Um, if you like to play around with circuits, you're probably a hacker. Um, hacker spaces are community funded workshops that allow people to go in and use tools and equipment that we cannot purchase by ourselves. Um, they will have your rapid prototypers, your, your 3D printers, your additive printers, your laser sintering machines. They are the kind of places that have not only the tools, but the knowledge to help you achieve your projects. They are also one of the faster growing areas of the DIY open source hardware community because they allow people to come together, exchange ideas, and are like more informal areas where you can go in and ask for help. And somebody there will help you because they've either tried something similar before 
or have experience that you don't have. Places we can learn more about this online uh, and in print. One of the most common places you will find things is there is a wonderful publication out called Make Magazine. Make Magazine, uh, I have a script, subscription myself, um, is a uh, magazine that comes out in print and on the internet and is basically different projects, different uh, concepts to be aware of in the future. It, it's kind of half of a trade publication, half of a, you know, Journal, or and uh, well, I guess half of just a regular rag for the DIY community. Let me get my Back up in a second. I'm going to go into uh, browser and drag it over, and we're going to look at a couple places. It's got its own blogs, podcasts, projects. It has its own community, sh its uh, own store where you can buy all the little parts and project kits that you need. Um, a couple of the projects that are um, up right now, they're doing an origami CD case. Um, the deal of the day is a 4D POV display, which allows you to mount it to like a, a spoke of a bicycle and it will flash the LEDs in order to make a full picture every time it goes around. Other places, um, Hackaday is one of my preferred sources. Uh, it's more informal uh, the way it is. It's a lot of just short text and notes. Um, but it's more of the fun projects that you get to do. Um, for example, this guy apparently got bored with guitar here and designed Trumpet Girl. <laughs> The Tricorder project is also an open source project that is currently in existence. Um, this is actually a challenge for schools and research groups all over the United States and all over the world, in fact. Um, they're trying to create a medical diagnostic device that is very similar to the Star Trek Tricorder, um, where um, ambulance crews, doctors, will have a, just a small kit that they can use to diagnose uh, most common ailments and illnesses. Uh, it'll take uh, EKG readings, blood pressure, uh, sugar levels, combining all the diagnostic tools you need into your fingertips. This is one I saw this morning when I logged on. Um, this is an Arduino project. This guy decided he could water his garden and he wasn't home to do it. So he created an Arduino system to turn the pump onto his rain barrel to water his garden while he's out. 